What's up, Miniatures Paper Arch Legion? This is Rob, your host. Welcome to Pro Painted. Welcome back, TMP fans. And must I say, you're looking quite dapper today. Now, today what we're going to do is we're going to get into the mind of a true pro painter, one of the top artists in our community. So let's get to it. Alrighty, so uh, today is an amazing day because we are here with one of the legends uh, in the painting community. Eric, in a few words, how would you introduce yourself to the community for the people who have never seen you, which they've lost and been living under a rock? Because uh, I would introduce myself. I am a professional miniature painter from the United States, from Virginia. Uh, I paint a lot of box arts for and pretty much most of the companies now, but uh, pretty known for work, my work for Privateer Press, Chimera Models, Hera Models, and, and many others. Oh yeah. I mean, I definitely gotta get myself the Chimera paint. Every time I try to go order some, it's always sold out. I hear the pigment is awesome. It's, uh, yeah, I, I use it quite often. Oh, man. I'm going to definitely have to get some to punch up the values of my uh, colors there. So did you always want to be a miniature painter? And how did it all start for you? Uh, I'll give the quick rundown. Uh, no, so I got into miniature painting like in my mid, mid 20s. Um, I used to paint like under models and stuff. And a friend of mine introduced me to Warhammer 40k because he knew I liked building models and introduced it to me because it was like a game that you could build and paint your own models. Yeah. I mean, how dare he introduce you to the plastic crack? <laughs> <laughs> I was already on the plastic crack. It was just a different kind. So. <laughs> uh, what words describe your painting, like your style, if you had to describe it? Uh, I would probably best describe it as like kind of an illustrative style. Um, I take a lot of inspiration from like video games, uh, Magic the Gathering, Warcraft, stuff like that. So it's a, a fantasy style, but a bit more colorful than the like dark fantasy of, of like Warhammer or someone like Brawl or or things like that. More more like Warcraft style of, of like punchy colors, Warcraft, right games, things like that. And it definitely shows. I mean, your colors really do pop on your pieces. So um, what was the best piece of advice you were giving in your journey of miniature painting? The best piece of advice I was given? Yeah. Um, Probably to not like seek perfection in every piece, but to learn something on every piece. So I, I treat every every piece as like a learning experience. Um, I've heard some advice given before to like when you're if you're thinking about entering Golden Demon or or something like that, to or any painting competition to like stick to what you know and do it really well. I would actually give the opposite advice. I would take the opportunity to like push your skills, try something new. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But the, you, you at least hopefully learn something in the process. That's awesome piece of advice. And I try to approach my miniatures in the same way. Every miniature is an opportunity for me to learn something new and to grow as a painter. That's awesome. So, which of your painted minis is your favorite or uh, means the most to you? Um, I think probably the one that means the most to me is, is probably the Thrall I did it for, for Monty in 2019. Um, for those that don't know, Monty Sansovino is a, is a miniature painting show in a small town in Italy, but it's probably one of the most like prestigious miniature painting shows in terms or in terms of like 
figure painting. And it's not really, not like going deep and it's attached to like a single company, but like the entire realm of miniature painting. Um, that was my first time doing a unique piece, like a, a, a one-off hand sculpted piece by Joaquin. And the first time competing, not only competing, but also traveling outside the US, going to a European show. So I think that one's probably has the most significance to me, but the, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's the one. Obviously my most recent one is special also, but that one is like, a, holds a special place just because of like the first. And I like the shows that are not attached to one company, like the Nova Open and things like that, because, you know, you're not just using one brand of miniatures, you're actually showing your technique and your skill across the plane in different kind of genres. And, you know, it really gets creative and opens the door. And wow, Italy. So you have all of Europe to contend with. That's amazing. And they, I hear that at Monte, they treat it more like art than just like a gaming piece, which has a lot of significance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say that there's a much, there's, at least at Monte, there is a bit um, larger focus on creativity. Creativity in the art of it, it's not all about like technique, a lot of what you hear, and I don't necessarily agree with it about like Golden Demons, that there's a large focus on just like technical perfection. Mm. And though I think there is some truth to that, I don't think it's as heavily emphasized as what some people might have you believe that like you have to paint in the, the games workshop style and all that. I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. Yeah, it's almost like watching, uh, having Big Brother watch over your shoulder at every Golden Demon. Like, no, you didn't do it in the GW style. So yeah, no. I, I don't think I don't <laughs> think that's accurate at all. I think you, you right. can you can paint in your own style and do well. It's just all about like doing what you do to the best that you can. So you mentioned uh, Joaquin. Uh, have you worked with him before? Yeah, we've done quite a few figures together at this point. Um, we've done the two Warcraft pieces that we did for Monty. I've done a few box arts with them and I've done a few collector pieces with them. So we've, we've worked on quite a few projects together. So as far as your biggest achievements today, would it be that Monty? The newest, the most recent one? Yes. Yeah. For the best to show, it would be. That, that is so epic. The, I can only dream of such. <laughs> wow. Um, so where do you paint? Do you paint at home? Do you have your separate studio? I have a home office. Like it's the room over the garage in, in my house. That's a separate studio. I think having like a, your own studio space. That's like, well, I'm a professional. So I always have to have my space to paint. But even as like a hobbyist, I think it's really important to have like a dedicated space to paint. Like if you have to tear down everything and pack stuff away. It, it causes you to like, it's just one more barrier to get in the way of you sitting down to actually paint. Yeah, if I'd have to tear down and set up, it definitely influenced my uh, motivation to yeah. get to it. Um, so how did you begin, how do you begin your day painting? Or, you know, how do you organize your day when you're dedicated to paint? <laughs> So my typical day, typical, uh, is normally I wake up, uh, I answer any like social media stuff I have to deal with social media. It's part of the job, right? Is mm -hmm. marketing and stuff. So, um, typically I do that in the morning, uh, or whenever I wake up, I don't hold like a very strict like, <laughs> sleeping <laughs> schedule. Uh, so whenever I get up and. I do that for a little bit and I only grab something to eat and then I sit down and, and I paint for hours and hours on end. I normally, I normally I have like an audio book or something to listen to while I'm, while I'm painting, but yeah, it's like a 10 hour day a lot of times. See, I'm a night owl, so I'll put on uh, studio lights and my brain can't tell it's night. So I just paint all night and <laughs> it's the next morning and I'm like, oh. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I, that was 12 I've hours. definitely <laughs> done some very late night painting. You mentioned audiobooks. What are you listening to now? Uh, I've been listening to the like Alric of Mel Nimine, 
That's cool. uh, fantasy series by Michael Moorcock. It's like a, I guess it's a, considered a bit of a classic in terms of fantasy mm. novels, but that, most of what I listen to tends to be fantasy, fantasy novels, The Witcher or Stormlight. Oh, so Stormlight Archive. So you do know Sanderson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I fell into that hole too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. All right. So from your experience, what were the most difficult techniques to learn uh, to master? Or was it eyes with skin? Was it blending? Was it shadows? Is it non-metallic metals? So I, I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here and yeah. answer Please. Uh, the question a little differently. So I think, I think we have like an overemphasis, that, and this is something I've realized recently with, with teaching and looking at classes and like class offerings and everything and, and doing some private coaching that I think there's an overemphasis on techniques and like labeling techniques in miniature painting. So um, whether it's OSL or non-metallic metal, uh, it really, there's not much of a difference, right? It's understanding how light and shadow works. And if you can understand how light and shadow works on different surfaces, whether it's like a reflective surface or a matte surface or skin that's got like a slightly oily surface to it, right? Mm -hmm. If you can begin to under understand those things and how light works on different like volumes uh i think that's the bigger key to really understanding how to paint any material right um and and things like texture so yeah i think i think we have a because of the like catchiness of buzz like those buzzwords and and labeling things that i think that people get caught up in that a lot where they're like, I need to learn how to wet blend, or I need to learn how to glaze, or do all these different things. Those are all just tools uh, to get you to the same end result, right? Mm. And and that's painting effective materials and and light volumes. So, would you recommend a video series or a audiobook or a book to read about studying light? And values of which i've heard of some i haven't read any really the, i think the best thing you can do is try and just like use reference like look at look at a lot of reference and and not just like paint what you see but try and understand why light works a certain way like why does light fall on this shape this way or why does metallic reflect in, in the way that it does? Um, if I was to say like one technique, like kind of unlocked, unlocked an understanding for me, it would probably be my study of non-metallic. Like I went in for like six months to a year of painting oh, wow. as much non-metallic as I could. Wow. Uh, and I think once I really understood, it wasn't so much understanding how to paint non-metallic, it was understanding how reflections work. So once I understood that like, oh, light hits here and it bounces this way, and that made more sense for like painting hair, which can be slightly glossy and shiny. It, it made me understand like painting silk. Um, so I, I think that was, that's really the key is, is to just understand how light and volumes work. So get a Stormcast Eternal army and paint it all non-metallic metal and see what happens. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I think, I think, no, because what what will happen there is that's all that's going to do is teach you how to paint a Stormcast Eternal. Oh right, right. right? Uh, you have to try on like different things. So you're like, cool. I understand how to paint the, a Stormcast Eternal's armor, but every single one of their armors is the same. Right. So you're only going to learn how to paint those specific volumes. Um, yeah, you have to practice on like a wider variety of, of subjects. Do you recommend the miniature line or possibly busts? Uh, I I tend to think that like a bit larger figures are a bit better because there's more surface area to paint on. Um, 
but no, I don't have like any specific recommendations for like, this is a good figure to practice on. I think just like any figure, as long as you're like changing it up constantly, right? You're yeah. not just painting the same thing over and over again. Because right. uh, like I said, all that's going to do is teach you how to paint that one thing really well. Mm -hmm. So speaking about switching it up, um, do you stick to acrylic or have you tried non-acrylic painting techniques like using oils and stuff like no, that? No, I paint with acrylic paints. Oil paints are too, I painted with oil paints, uh, when I went, did art school when I was younger, we used oils. It, it's too slow. It, the drying time like takes forever. It's not the way I paint. Um, so I, I stick to acrylic paints. Have you used heavy body acrylics? Yeah, I've used heavy body acrylics. They aren't quite for me. It's the way I tend to like trace the brush strokes and stuff, the, the heavy body. I think heavy body acrylics are good if you're like into wet blending. And I've used them on like bases where I need to like quickly make like large areas of big transitions. Yeah. Um, but on small figures, I don't tend to use heavy bodies that much. What is your approach to painting white? Because <laughs> I've always had uh, difficulty with that. Like, like if I'm trying to paint like a really bright white, like yeah. a like a pure white, mm -hmm. um, normally I'll use the airbrush to like get white down, like whether it's like a white ink or or whatever, and then I'll paint the shadows on top of that and weave the white uh, spray. It's like the brightest light. I, cool. it's, it's much easier to work your way down than it, like into the shadows than it is to try and go up to white that's great and you can't always do that but if you can <laughs> if you can yeah I, I think it's faster and easier so what tips or advice would you give someone just starting out into this hobby just starting out yeah um just starting out is just have fun like just uh like get used to holding the brush uh, get you like understand the properties of the paint like learn like i know there's a, a big like oh you gotta thin your paints no that's not necessarily true you can paint with thicker paints a thing i see people do a lot is they tend to like overwork their paints mm -hmm. where the like paint will be drying on the figure and they continue to like try and move it around and you get like the paint gets Lifts lifted and, yeah. and pushed around and you get this like nasty drying crust along like mm -hmm. the where the paint's been like pushed um so like applying a coat of paint letting it dry you can apply thick paint let it dry and it'll give you a smooth finish so i, I think if you can understand that stuff then you can start to get like get into more of the artistic side but really just like understanding the materials at first is really important awesome. learn how to mix paints like don't don't stick to recipes the names on the bottles are not important you don't have to use leather brown to paint leather yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. i learned that for sure <laughs> yeah. um, but, so what are some of the best ways to battle fatigue you have a very large project. Uh, I had this con I was actually having a conversation about this today with another pretty well known. I won't, I won't say who it was, but they, they were talking to me about the like, kind of burnout today. I think one of my biggest tips for burnout after doing like a huge project, or even like if you're painting a like an army, right? Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of probably listeners are army painters, mm -hmm. um, is to like do something small in between the bigger projects that you can like finish something and, and see like get that sense of completion right yeah. so if, you, if you're let we'll use the warhammer example right if you're painting ten, a squad of tactical marines or intercessors or whatever they're called now mm -hmm. uh reward yourself with like an hq or something small like in between right that you can just paint and he might only take you like a day or two or maybe a week if you only paint for like an hour or two a day. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be a lot less time than painting that Land Raider or whatever, you know? It's a big project. And you get that like satisfaction and it helps build momentum into the next project. 
That's and if awesome. you're into large figure painting, you know, maybe you just finished like a huge figure on like a, a knight on a horse and it took you weeks or even months for um, taking a break and painting like a small academic bust or, or like a more simple figure it could be like that you can finish over, you know, a few days and, and not putting that like pressure on yourself to be like, per like perfect on it, but just enjoying the paint the paint aspect of it, like the process. Uh, and you can get that done. It uh, can be like really rewarding, like I said, help build that momentum into the next project. Definitely. So where do you get your inspiration from? Uh, like I was saying earlier, a lot of my inspiration comes from 2D art. Uh, the 2D art, like, Fantasy artists, um, Frank Frazetta, like I said, Wei Wang from the Hootie Coast artists who did Warcraft, Magic the Gathering. Um, a lot of the, a lot of that's where I, I get most of my inspiration from. Um, yeah, I, I think that's probably the main one. So, do you play games with your miniatures, or just me? No, I, I mean I play Kingdom Death Monster from time to time, but I, I don't find that much time to play mm -hmm. play games anymore. I don't play any of the large tabletop games or anything. You have any new or exciting painting projects to share for 2023? Something in the line? Something in the works? Uh, nothing I can tell you about right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're sworn to secrecy. Oh my. Um, so when did you start taking painting seriously? Like you bowed down and said, you know what? This is not a hobby anymore. I'm going to be a pro painter. This is what I want to do. I mean, the, there was never really a plan to be a, a professional. Um, I took display painting. Like, so I was a painter for gaming. Um, and then I started taking like painting for display seriously in 2017. Uh, that's when I started to like really work on competition pieces, try and push my skills beyond just like getting my army done, painting larger scale figures. Um, I eventually got to a point where I reached out to Alfonso Manchi uh, to, to get some feedback from him through his Patreon. Uh, and then eventually it just, Kind of led to a point where after some of these competitions and things it i took notice from brands right and blah uh, hera reached out to me to do a fig a box art for them and then kind of after that it just led into once i think people saw that i was now like working for professionally like yes. it just led to more and more projects of course once you open the door, the floodgates, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there a model you've already painted that would you love to paint again? And if so, what would you do differently? Uh, no. No. No, no, no. Once, you're, once and done. <laughs> yeah, I don't like painting the same model twice. Uh, the, only, the only models I ever paint twice are like academic busts mm -hmm. because, like I said, like, I can paint one in like four hours or something. Yeah. And it's it's really like more of an exercise and less of me painting that figure right the figure itself doesn't really matter it's more just like sitting down to experiment or or something and i'm treating it more like a blank canvas than i am the the actual figure so that, that's the only time i ever paint a miniature more than once of other than that now i don't i don't matrix like painting the same miniature twice <laughs> Uh, how do you choose a color scheme? When you go for resources there. Oh, uh, it's when I choose a color scheme, it's more about I'm more often thinking about an ambience than I am a specific color scheme. So a lot of the times it's what kind of environment or mood do I want to set for the figure? And then that informs my color choices. Uh, whether I want it to be like um, a sunset or a cold scene if I want to do like a Viking in the snow 
I'm going to stick to more cold colors, blues, things like that, desaturated browns. Uh, if, if I'm working in a, you know, a warm scene like a desert, then I'll have more like yellows and and, and reds, oranges, things. But uh, it, it's not so much like. Yes, I understand the principles of like complementary color schemes and things like that. And those can inform decisions later in the painting process, but it's not typically something that's like, oh, I want to paint this guy blue and orange. You know, it's more like, okay, what do I, what kind of mood do I want to give this piece? And then that, that informs the color. What's, you have a Patreon, correct? No, I do mm. not have a Patreon. Well, you do teach classes. I do teach classes, yes. So what's the number one question you get asked? The number one get question I get asked is what paints do you use and what brushes do you use? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah that's, that's the biggest question. And, uh, and typically my answer is try them and, and, <laughs> and figure out which one you like, right? Yeah. Uh, I could give recommendations on ones I think are good, but uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that seems to be the biggest question. I guess people think that like, if I use the same stuff Eric does, then I'll paint like Eric. Right, right. <laughs> well, I remember by getting my, you know, my first uh, Series 7 brush from Windsor and the, and the, and the Raphael, and I was like, I'm going to be great. And I, and I started painting that. I was like, oh man, I still suck. <laughs> like, it didn't make me a better painter. I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, so um, um, yeah yeah that's the big question i guess in terms <laughs> of like painting um like more process style mm -hmm. uh, people often want to know again they want to know like techniques because they've, like, they've been they've been so much like enforced by this kind of youtube and and the the it's, it's very easy to make a video and I understand why it's very easy to make a video for YouTube. That's like explaining a technique right. as opposed to be like explaining a concept. Right. Definitely. So, so it's, yeah, I, I get where it comes from, but I, I think that's, that's another big one. Like, how do you do non-metallic metal? How do you do this? Like, what colors do you use in your skin? I hate that question, by the way. Like, what? <laughs> what colors do you use to paint this model? Because I could tell you the exact like bottles of paint that I used, but it's not going to tell you my mixes and how I applied it and how thick I applied it and all those other things that go along with painting it, right? Mm -hmm. I think the only way you would learn that is by watching. And speaking of watching, you do have a YouTube channel I, I saw and subscribed to. <laughs> yeah, I started recently. Um, I started last year streaming on Twitch. Uh, I wasn't able to do it that much just because of scheduling and how, many, how much like box arts and things I had taken on. Um, but now that I kind of have a better idea of what my workload is, um, the next year and start this year, I, I want to stream a little more often, uh, hopefully like once a week. And I've, I've started uploading those, the, the full stream VODs to YouTube. That is so cool. So any plugs or final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can check out my YouTube. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm everywhere on social media. It's just Eric Swinson um, I'm on YouTube. I'm on Instagram. I'm on yeah. Twitch. And I'll put all those links down in the description so they can find you and they can revel in the glory of your talent. Uh, and, and people say talent, but that is a lot of hard work. That's what that is. <laughs> hey, so yeah, practice. Yeah. Practice is like, that, that's another point of advice. If I could give actually one big point of advice for beginning painters, go, to go back to that question, I would say that stop watching so many dang YouTube videos and start painting more. <laughs> there it is. There yeah. it is. Yeah. As someone who just started a YouTube channel, <laughs> I watch less YouTube. But really, it's, it's experience. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. practice is what's going to make you better. You can only learn so much by seeing something, do, seeing someone do something. You have to do it yourself.
Well, thank you so much. I had an awesome time with you. Maybe we can have you back on the show again, uh, maybe next year. What do you think? Cool, man. Anytime you want to do a video on the show, you're more than welcome to, of course. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Well, thanks, man. Cool. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much, Eric, for giving up some part of your day to spend with us. And if you wish to connect with Eric, I have a link to his socials down below and click on that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And finally, copyright, may your backlog get ever smaller. <laughs>